I recently hit 15,000 subscribers, which is a pretty big number for me, and I asked my subscribers here on this YouTube channel, I said, what should I do to celebrate? And Mima had a really good suggestion. Mima said, maybe like a video about favorite and least favorite features of popular pet sim games. And I thought that was a really good jumping off point because it would give me the opportunity to talk about stuff on all of the games and really give a general overview of the landscape of browser-based games and what I'm playing these days. So here we go. Here's the 2023 Pet Simmer Julie roundup of browser-based pet games and browser-based virtual experiences of note. The first category that I want to talk about is quality of life experience. So this is you go on the website and the experiences are frictionless. You're able to accomplish your goals that align with the site's goals for what you should be doing on their website and do it in a very seamless, frictionless way. I want to first commend a website for a feature update that was so impactful that I had a huge emotional response when this feature update rolled out. And that is the Neopets Neolodge update. For those of you not in the know, the Neolodge is a feature on Neopets where you can check in your Neopets to the Neolodge for up to 28 days. I'm gonna round up and say 30. And while your pets are at the Neo Lodge, the Neo Lodge will feed them and play with them. At the end of that 28 day stay, you will get an email to your real off-site personal email account that's associated with Neopets.com letting you know that your pets have left the Neo Lodge. If you're taking a break from Neopets but you still somewhat care about what's going on, on the website, this could be a really helpful nudge to get you to go back on the website to put your pets back in the Neo Lodge for another 28 days. And what Neopets did was they made this quality of life update and it's small but for me it was a huge nod to awareness of what users are looking from the game and that change was instead of simply sending one pet at a time and going through the process of clicking the buttons you can now take care of all of your pets at once it feels so silly and so small, but for me, I was really impressed by this update. It said to me that the Neopets team is paying attention and it was such an effort of goodwill. Now, if Neopets regularly did quality of life updates, this wouldn't be a big deal, but they don't. So this was a huge deal to me because this is such a big pain point over the years. And it's one of those times where a pain point that I had never noticed gave me pain was addressed. Like I never would make a video saying, wow, it'd be cool if we could do this all at once instead of each pet individually. Now, super fans are probably gonna point out that I may have said that at one point of time, and if I did, then really good work to previous Julie, but I can't recall ever having that thought. It's possible it was a fleeting thought and that I captured it on video, but for me in 2023, I can't recall ever having that thought. And so it was like a good moment of, hey, this is where my gap of awareness was on UI and UX, and somebody at the Neopets team saw that opportunity for advancement, and they took advantage of it. The game with the best quality of life experience, I would say, is Flight Rising. Right now, I am listening to an audiobook called Mismatch, and it's about inclusion in design. There are several features on Flight Rising that are really positive for me as someone who is currently able-bodied. A really good thing that I took away from Mismatch so far is that in life, the majority of us are temporarily fully able-bodied. I've benefited greatly from the features and the updates that Flight Rising has enacted and enabled in order to be more accessible for differently abled folks. So if you have like chronic pain in your wrists or fingers, then playing browser-based games can be a real nightmare. And what Flight Rising has done is added hotkeys throughout the website to make browsing and navigation and doing burdensome, repetitive tasks much easier. There are a couple different examples of this. On Flight Rising, your dragons are able to have a familiar, which is like a pet, 
it's one unique familiar to one unique dragon and you have to click this button to bond with them every day in order to get a reward. You can have over a hundred dragons. I have 244 dragons, so that's 244 familiars to bond with every day, and it's three clicks per bond. And Flight Rising has made it so you only have to do one click on the mouse and one tap on the arrow key, because you can navigate between dragons using the arrow key. Now that I'm playing Lydon again, and there's these different interactions that you could do on the individual line pages, one of the biggest things that I find myself missing is the inability to navigate between lion pages within a den by using the arrow keys. So this is something that Flight Rising does that is just so smart. And when I first heard of these features that allow users to interact with the website in a more robust way, it, it blindsided me. I never, it had never occurred to me that people with chronic pain or some kind of accessibility impediment would play these games and then get any type of support from the game in order to play the game more fully. It never had occurred to me that there was a gap in experience for those users. So the fact that it's helpful to me, but it also makes the game accessible to them, is just incredibly huge and it was just a huge learning opportunity for me. Flight Rising is so thoughtful. Even with the aspects of the game that I don't play, for instance, I don't really do Coliseum. I go into the Coliseum maybe once a year, but Flight Rising has gone out of their way to implement hotkeys in the Coliseum as well, so you don't need to use a mouse. You could just use your keyboard to play the Coliseum. And that it's not like they had to do it. It's something that they said this would make the game experience better for a broader range of users, and that's why we should do it. And I really think it's just worth mentioning. So good work, Flight Rising, on that good quality of life experience. The next category that I want to talk about is depth of gameplay. What is depth of gameplay? Depth of gameplay means that there are features that a user can dedicate a lot of time and mental energy in pursuing. So it's not just a surface level feature where you just interact with it once, it's a feature that you're really able to develop a strategy around and find yourself really getting lost in the meta game. An example of this would be on Neopets, the high score lists around meta features like reading books to your pet and then becoming somebody who's pursuing a high score for your pet's books read. I really like games that have many different deep gameplay avenues. For instance, Lydon has a lot, Mara Pets has a lot, Neopets has a lot, Flight Rising's breeding game, their familiar collecting game, those are all examples of deep game elements. It means that the developers have had to have the time to not only establish the core gameplay, but then able to flesh out these type of meta games that really lend a sense of richness to the game experience. So the deepest depth of gameplay I'm going to attribute to Maripets. Maripets has so many features and it's funny to me because these features were developed in parody of Neopets, but without the bloat and the bureaucracy, Maripets was able to focus on developing a really rich and deep gameplay that's weird and more nuanced than Neopets is. I've been very much enjoying completing my monthly checklist, which I would say is one of the best features I have on any of the browser-based games that I play. I really look forward to the first of each month so I could tackle my monthly checklist, and the monthly checklist provides an array of different categories of metagame to get into. For instance, expanding your collection, playing the mini games, completing quests, and each quest category has their own depth of the further you've completed, the more quests you've completed, the more prizes you get. And those prizes align to different depths of game throughout the site. For instance, hatching eggs. There are some eggs that you get 
from getting high scores in games or completing more quests. And the egg hatching game is a game in and of itself. I'm really into on Mara Pets my jobs for my pets. For instance, one of my pets is an architect. And the further along they get in their architecture career, there's benefits in other aspects of the site. But also, when you level up your pet, it helps in other parts of the site. Like they're gonna be stronger at battling. They're gonna be more adept at the Olympics. Now that being said, I have so many criticisms of Mara pets. I don't wanna get into that. I also don't wanna get into the whole like meta analysis of this channel where it's like, shouldn't I be boycotting games that are sometimes pretty awful to the users? If I did that, there would be nothing to talk about on this channel. So I've just made the decision in general that this channel talks a lot about browser-based virtual pet games and I can't do that if I don't play the browser-based virtual pet games. So for that discourse on Mara Pets, I'm going to link a couple of videos if you'd like to get deeper into that. But it does have, I would say, the broadest and the deepest depth of gameplay features. Now there's a different award that I would like to offer, which is the best execution of deep gameplay, which is different than the overall depth. Because Mara Pets has a lot that gets really deep, but you can tell that it's kind of spaghetti. Different things were developed at different time periods, and it doesn't necessarily come together in a coherent way. It's not like a deep game of chess. It's just stuff was made, and then more of it was made. So the game with the best execution, that has the best features that work together in the most coherent way, I would say is Lyodin. Lyodin has the beetle game, it's got the breeding game, which includes not only genes for what's showing up, what, how to make your lines look pretty over several generations, but also the mutation mini game. I think that Lyodin has a really exciting depth of gameplay, not only on like a years long scale, but on a daily scale. You're able to go online and, and you could play to your heart's content essentially. And it's it can be overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming. You could log on once a day and get everything that you wanted done. Or if you're looking for that deeper, longer daily experience, you can play Lydon almost all day. It's a really enjoyable game from that perspective. The next category is a little bit more niche. I got into the Neopets game clones over last summer and I had the opportunity to trial several different Neopets clones and enjoy these games that have been developed by fans that replicate the nostalgia of Neopets. So the best nostalgic experience of Neopets does not go to Neopets.com. Frankly, I don't know what's going on with that website. It does not give me nostalgia. It's a whole thing. So for me, the most no nostalgic Neopets experience would go to Modern Neopets, which is funny because Modern Neopets is not the most true iteration of Neopets. It's not the most kept to the standard of website design from early Neopets. It is a modern update of classic Neopets, right? It has the same navigation bar on the side that you would expect from a traditional rendering of Neopets. However, in the UI and the UX, there are modern elements that make browsing and experiencing the site better. And on top of that, it's easy to make currency, it's easy to paint your pets, and there are so many color options that it's just an exciting website. I really enjoy modern Neopets. This next category is the best site event. Most of the games that I play have a site event, if not every month, four times a year. And there's a lot of competition between the sites on developing new features, having new types of site events. So this is really hard to judge, especially because on Flight Rising, there are events each month. And sometimes they are recycling the basic frame from the last month, the monthly event, the flight holiday is an example of this but then a couple times a year they have special holidays and it's it's hard because 
they execute it all so well. And how you compare that to something like the Neopets Advent Calendar, which just went full chaos mode. If you're not paying attention to the events on Neopets lately, they've decided to really take on inflation and release just the most expensive items. The Neopets Advent Calendar released a Meowclops, which is one of the most expensive pet pets on the site. Just the scale of which this was an unobtainable item. I purchased one when I decimated my Neopets capital. I wanted to get down to zero Neo points, and so one of the, day the ways that I accomplished that was by buying a Meowclops, right? It, I saw it as an opportunity to get rid of a lot of Neo points fast, to put into perspective how expensive a Meowclops was. And they gave away one in the advent calendar, which means all you have to do is log into the site and press a button, and you got one of the most expensive things on the website. If you're very in the know, but not up to date, you're looking at the screenshot and you're saying, Julie, that is a Christmas Meowclops. You can't paint that likely. You can't turn that into a standard Meowclops. It probably doesn't give you the avatar. It should not impact the price of a standard Meowclops. And that reasoning, fantastic. You're up to date. You understand how things work. However, I've got news for you. This Meowclops, this Christmas Meowclops, for some reason can be painted standard Meowclops colors. You can paint it black and get a regular Meowclops out of it. It had huge impacts on the Pet Pet paintbrush prices, but for some reason this one was not locked to just the Christmas color and it could be painted other colors. So it did impact the price of the standard Meowclops. It was bananas bonkers, crazy insane, just goblin mode decision making. And Neopets has been doing this with their events. For instance, there's an event ongoing right now, which according to my calculations, if you just participate every day, you can get a fairy paintbrush, which is one of those things that people aspire to in their childhood and never accomplish. So you can get a Neopets fairy paintbrush. It's just insane. But to me, that doesn't make an event good. It just redistributes some of the unobtainable items on Neopets.com to people who play very casually and never had the option to realistically obtain those items. The best event in recent history is also ongoing at this very moment, and it is the Lyodin 10th birthday celebration. This celebration came with a gift pack. So if you logged in, you get this gift pack that's full of a bunch of food and other gameplay boons. But then on top of that, there are these really fun challenges like breeding challenges, which is something that you're likely already doing on Lyodin. And then there's a battling challenge, which just really incentivizes being on the website. And then there is this cute little treasure hunt that had a really good prize. Frankly, I think Lydon does just a great job with the stuff that they do, and this event, to me, was a good example. In general, the events, the monthly events on Lydon, are well-structured in the same way Flight Rising is, but this birthday event, I'm incredibly impressed. I just think that they've done a really good job executing it. This last one is a real oddball and it is about egg hatching games. There are a number of egg hatching type games that I play in the games that I've mentioned so far. On Flight Rising, when you hatch a clutch of eggs, you don't know which breed or color they're gonna have, what color eyes they're gonna have, which I think was a great feature to add. The same with Lydon, when a lioness gives birth to some cubs, you don't know what kind of attributes they're gonna have. But what I really want to talk about is the cultural heritage of egg hatching games. I recall back to my young childhood, adulthood, when I would go on the Neopets role-playing forums and there would be text-based egg hatching games. Or even the precursor to that, when you would be scrolling on your off-site forums and in people's signatures, there would be links to pixel egg hatching games. And if you clicked on that person's signature, their egg may hatch or their creature may evolve, what have you. Those games are the bedrock, the foundation, the forefather of browser-based virtual pet games. They are the genesis. They are what it comes back to. And there is one game out there that I think just demands our respect and 
needs to be acknowledged for everything that they've accomplished. And that game is Chicken Smoothie. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. You can log on to Chicken Smoothie today and collect your eggs, your adoptables that could turn out to be incredibly rare, incredibly common. And it doesn't matter if the last time you logged on was five years ago. Chicken Smoothie is there for you today. It was there yesterday and it's going to be there tomorrow. It's never going anywhere because it is firm, it is stable and it's consistent. It doesn't matter if it's December 2020 or if it's December 2016 or December 2023. When you log on on that special day, you're going to be able to adopt something rare from history. And that's amazing how consistent it is, how reliable Chicken Smoothie is. I think it's just worth celebrating the fact that we still have this game and it's still doing what it's done all along. I, I love the fact that this game exists. I don't really play it. Every once in a while I think of it and I log on and I'm just like, Look at you doing that thing that you do and you do it so well. And I just, I just have immense respect for the game developers and the managers and just everyone who contributes art that keeps this game going. I think it's special and I think it's worth celebrating. So here it is, Chicken Smoothie. You're one of the best of 2023, of 2022, of all time. Thank you for being you. So I probably gave it away a little bit in that last bit, but I have wanted to talk about egg hatching games for a really long time because like I said, I do think of them as like a forefather of the genre that we don't really talk about or acknowledge, or at least I don't, which is that so many of the aspects of the games, the breeding mechanics are these chance-based games that are akin to opening a pack of trading cards. And it reminds me a lot of egg hatching games of my childhood slash young adulthood and the fact that they're still around is I don't know like really meaningful to me and anyways there I've been playing a lot of the browser-based games lately uh always fly rising always but I also recently got back into Lydon I've been playing lore wolf on and on since it's been available. It's currently unavailable. I believe it launches on April 6th. And there's a lot that I want to talk about. Uh, the reason why I haven't been making as many video games, the reason why I haven't been making as many videos is because I'm in grad school and I just had the hardest class of my entire life. Like literally, if you add up every year of school that I've ever had and look at every semester I've ever had, uh, this semester has been hands down the hardest semester of my life and it's just like why did I do this I'm, I'm 30 years old I'll be 31 years old in a couple of days and I could have not gone back to school like that was an option actually like I was on the path of never going back to school and I decided that I wanted to do something really hard instead and that something hard involves homework a lot of it right I I have spent the last seven eight years of my life not doing homework and then all of a sudden I'm doing homework again and that sucks uh but there's lots of stuff that I do want to talk about especially when it comes to like game design and so I'm having the thoughts I'm thinking the thoughts and I just kind of thought that making this video would be an opportunity for me to share what I've been thinking about and also to open the door to some conversations that I hope play out in the chat, in the comment section below. So thank you guys so much. I know that I haven't been here as much and I'm sorry, it's gonna be like this for at least another year. Um, but I'm still reading my comments and I'm making videos when I can. I'm making short videos when I can. I'm still here. I'm still having these thoughts and they're not gonna go away just because I'm unavailable. I do have to give the warning that I'm getting married in October. And so in the lead up to that, things are probably gonna be kind of hectic. Right now it's March, so we're in the clear. And I just finished that really hard class. And so there's like this small window of time where I might, if I can, make videos. I also might just make art, you know? 
uh, and I can't hold this myself to the standard where I'm always creating this specific type of content. I, I like to be creative and do other things with my time. So thank you for understanding. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.